As we think about the wife of Isaac, uh, I was trying to get a, a simple outline. Uh, first thing we see here is the, the father's preparation. We looked at that last week. And then we have a, a good portion of scripture that talks about the servant's procurement of a wife. Procurement. We'll look at that a little bit tonight, today. And then number three, we see the son's possession. That's Isaac, the uh, latter part of the chapter. And you might not like the word possession of the wife, but I'll explain that in a minute. But see, chapter 24, and I hope you take time during the week to <coughs> read through it. Because, like I say, there's, there's quite a, see how many verses here? There's quite a few verses. And it's almost like uh, it's three uh, movements or three stages, you know, Act 1, Act 2, Act 3. And so, to get the picture of how it all goes together, but, you know, when we think about a wife for Isaac in chapter 24, comes to mind a wife for the Lord Jesus. When you're reading through chapter 24, think about that. A wife for the, a bride for the Lord Jesus. Also, do you see the whole process, uh, process of elect sinner being saved? Wow. Read 24 and you might see that too. How God does that. And uh, that's why I, 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 I said that the, uh, the second act or the second motion here is, or the third one, is the son's possession. You see, uh, the Lord Jesus, the son, purchased his bride, the elect sinner, uh, by right of redemption and by, by the price of ransom. So, in a sense, when we see that last part where, where Rebecca comes and gets off her camel and she sees Isaac, you see, Isaac is a type of the Lord Jesus. Abraham is a type of the Father, and Jacob is, is a type of the work of the Holy Spirit. We'll, we'll see that, but... Um, but when you read chapter 24, look, look not only, well, a wife for Isaac, but a, a, a bride for the Lord Jesus. Is there some similarities there? How about when God saves a sinner? When, uh, we'll see that. But notice here, also, as we think about this uh, real quick, in a matter of introduction, compare the servant's work in procuring Rebecca to our Lord's saving of the woman at the well in John 4. There's another like I'm saying, maybe these are perspective uh, Bible studies that you might do, you see. When you come to Genesis 24, you see there's a whole, whole little, there's a lot of uh, uh, directions that you could go. Now, we're going to look at the literal part first, but think about this and compare that to John chapter 4. Now, Rebecca's case is kind of easy. when you uh, She's willing to leave home, we'll find out. She agrees. And I think, well, how easily, you know, that's one of those uh, uh, stumbling blocks for the servant. We'll see, you know, when, when you know, he, the servant is going to go all the way back to Mesopotamia and, and uh, the servant is concerned, and we looked at last week, about whether this young woman would want to come and take that long trip back, not ever seeing Isaac or anything like that. And so there was a concern. But you see, when uh, in Rebecca's case of being a type of a sinner being saved, we see effectual call. We see efficacious grace. When God calls, dear sinner, we come, right? God changes our hearts. And how easy Rebecca just says, I'll go. <laughs> Take me, I'll go. It's, it's amazing. You see, they say, the scripture does say uh, very clearly that it, uh, they, they will be willing in the day of his power. But compare also Rebecca's character and quality, qualities or qualifications to the, to the woman at the well. Rebecca, well, uh, her name it means ensnarer, and we'll see that later, you know. We think of uh, Rebecca uh, uh, and Jacob uh, and all that and, and what, he, what they do, okay. But see, but in 24, Genesis 24, uh, that doesn't match Rebecca at all. I mean, the qualities and qualifications, you know, we're going to see, uh, not this week, but a week, couple of weeks later, uh, you know, the qualifications of, of a wife here. You know, she, you know, she's not a sluggard, she's industrious, she's courteous, she's kind, she's going to help. You know, all these things, you see, uh, are part of Rebecca, and we see uh, how that is like a Christian also. You see, later on, we know that Rebecca needs sanctifying grace. 
And we see the woman at the well in John 4 that, you know, her life was a mess, but God saved her. And after God saved her, you know, she was a trophy of grace. So you see, dear ones, there's a lot there, actually. <laughs> if you want to look at Genesis 24 and do some other studying. But let me give you one more thing here. Um, remember I said last week, the servant has no name. The servant has no name. And the idea, and, and we're looking at the when the servant procures the wife, or Rebecca, you see, uh, who procures the sinner? Who brings the sinner to the feet of the Lord Jesus? It's God, Holy Spirit. And so when you read Genesis 24, look at this, take a moment and think of the servant as God, Holy Spirit, and his work in bringing the sinner, bringing the bride, bringing uh, Rebecca, bringing the woman at the well, bringing you. See, he's procuring a wife, a sinner. You see, the sinner is called, and by God's uh, grace, the Holy Spirit uh, works in them, and they answer that call. You see, the Holy Spirit is on a mission to apply the salvation prepared by the Father, purchased by the Son. Titus 3.5 says, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So, it, I'm not trying to demean the, the person of the Holy Spirit in any way, God Holy Spirit, but I want you to, when you go to Genesis 24 and read it, it said, well, the servant is, in a similar way, is acting like what God Holy Spirit would do. Some things to meditate upon, to think about. He said, well, I didn't think there was that much in Genesis 24. That was just a narrative. And it is, but it, I think it's very interesting. You see, the Holy Spirit is on a mission, right? But are we on a mission? Are we like the servant? Well, I, I'm not a missionary. I'm not an evangelist. I'm not a pastor. But I think every Christian, right, is like the servant. We are procuring. We're, we're, you see, we're going after and we're preaching the gospel, ministering to people that they might come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, the heavenly Isaac. Said all that in that of introduction. Let's look at the matter of uh, the first point or the, the idea of procuring a wife for Isaac. A wife for Isaac. There's a lot of scripture here. Let me just run through some points here. And give you an idea as you again it would very it would help a lot if you just take time uh, over these weeks to read Genesis 24 maybe you've done that already okay uh, this I believe chapter 24 is uh, kind of divided between uh, verses uh, I think 10 to 28 and then uh, 29 to 60 and 61 to 67 remember I said there were like three three motions or three acts you see you have the father's preparation you have the servants a procurement, and then you have the Isaac possessing or possessing his wife. Okay, uh, we're going to look at the procurement that's in verse 10 through 14. Uh, we see that in this procurement, the upholding of God's providential working is really interesting. Look at verse 15 for a minute. I'm just going to give you a couple verses and then we'll go on. Notice it's in verse 15. How do you like that? And it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold, Rebekah came out. Well, talk about an answer to prayer. Talk about the providential working of God. I like what verse 21, and you'll see this uh, twice in these verses. Uh, verse 21, get back here, uh, it says, um, And the man wondering at, held his peace to wit whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. And then and through chapter 24, you'll see the servant bowing his head at different points. Uh, he gets to tell the story, and then he bows the head. And, uh, uh, when Rebecca reveals herself of who she is, and that she's Nahor's uh, daughter or, or you know, uh, relative, family, uh, he bows his head and worships, and, and we see that. There's going to be... Uh, in verse 22, we see the procurement secured. Uh, it talks about a, an earring and, and bracelets upon uh, Rebecca's uh, uh, hands, and like a dowry and stuff like that. An earnest payment, okay, confirmed. And then, uh, again, the servant worships and he prays and he thanks God in verses 26 to 28. So there's a lot there, okay? So I would ask you to take time to read. But look at verse 27. This is the verse for this morning. 
It is a matter of procurement. Verse 27. Maybe you've heard this verse before, or part of this verse. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brother. Now this is, you see, uh, you understand, Read the context, you know. Yes, uh, Rebecca uh, reveals that she's part of the family. Uh, she runs home. Laman comes. Uh, the servant goes back to the house. They're, you know, they got to take care of the camels and all this other stuff. And they're sitting down to dinner, ready to eat. And, and the servant says, I can't eat a morsel of food until I tell you this great story, what God is doing. And verse 27 is part of that narrative or rehearsing of what God is doing, how, how the servant was sent and how he prayed and, and how he asked for a sign and how everything just fell right into place. Verse 27, I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my father's brother. This is the really the key or principal verse this morning. This has a really, this verse is a, a blessing to me. It has personal application. You see, when you want to know if you're called to preach, I, I don't know, I, I always wanted a Federal Express letter come in the mail. That would be easier. You know, God, am I supposed to preach? Am I supposed to teach? So in Youngstown, I, I didn't preach or teach or anything like that. Uh, I had a bookstore, Christian bookstore. Bibles, tracts, uh, tapes, books, sold them at cost. Went on the streets, passed out tracts, things of that sort. Uh, never thought about preaching or anything like that. <coughs> then I went to Georgia. And I went to Pastor David. You know, he has a college there, the uh, Georgia Baptist College and, and the church. And, and I said, Pastor David, uh, I'm waiting for that express letter, you know, that Federal Express letter, to know if I'm called to preach. And guess what he said to me? He says... I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brother. He says, as you're in the way, he will show you. I said, okay, so what do I do? He says, go preach. I said, where? The jails are open. Every Thursday, I would go. Every Thursday, I would go and preach in the maximum security prisons uh, with Brother Brian <laughs> and others, okay? And then, then uh, later on, uh, uh, Pastor David and Dr. Cecilius would go to their trips to Maranatha and go to other places. Uh, Pastor David's been in India quite a few times, okay? And he'd say, Tom, I want you to do the adult Sunday school. Uh, me? You, you're kidding me. See? It says in verse 27, I being in the way. The Lord led me. And as, as I was sitting, I, I told Pastor, or I said to my own heart and to the Lord, I would never ask to preach, never, and I've never asked. But if if I was uh, Doctor Cecilius would be coming along in the school, in the day school, and he says, "Tom, I, you know what? The, the um, I need you to preach. You got about five minutes for chapel, the little ones, or for the college, or for the nursing home." Uh, so. Uh, and so what happened is, what I'm getting this at, as, as I was led in the way, as Pastor David says, just do it, Tom. As you're, you're leading, as you're going that way, uh, God will show you. The church confirmed it. See, the church confirmed it. That, that yes, I, I, I had graces and gifts were given to me, and the church, the local church, conform, um, confirmed this. So this verse is very special, this verse, okay? And, and so the application this morning is, you know, and again, determining God's will. Determining God's will. Uh, we have a servant's example, and that's what we're going to look at, okay? And we're going to give you some bases or some pointers uh, in, in determining God's will. And, and from the scriptures, okay? You know, the first pointer is this. In determining God's will, you have to rule out the most obvious. What do I mean by that? Rule out the most obvious. Now notice in verse 12 for a minute. Genesis 24 verse 12. 
O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. You see, part of the, the uh, as the servant was leaving, remember what Abraham said to the servant? Don't get a wife for Isaac in what? Canaan land. So isn't it very obvious, don't look in Canaan land? Why waste your time looking in Canaan land? He said, well, he was, oh, that's, that's like, uh, that's so elementary. But sometimes it isn't, is it? You see, you come to the scriptures and the scriptures say, this is the will of God. Like in uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, about, about uh, possessing your vessel, your wife, in a sense of uh, uh, fidelity, things of that. Or you can go to 1 Thessalonians 5, and, uh, this is the will of God, in everything give thanks. And there's other verses like this. This is the will of God. This is the will of God. You see, first thing is to rule out the most obvious. Okay, look, let's look at something else here. Okay, look at verse 11. Verse 11. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city as by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. Well, isn't that kind of obvious here? You go, well, you go where the women are. You go where when they're going to come out. If you're looking for a wife or Isaac, you don't come when the men are there. You say, well, that's, that's real obvious. But you see, this is this idea of the servant. He's using his head. You see, he's using his head. You don't need, you're not going to find a wife or Isaac in the wrong place. You're not going to find a wife or Isaac in the wrong timing. You, you have to go where... He, he made it purposely. He used his head. So secondly, the first thing is, you know, rule out the, 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 the most obvious, you know, uh, what is God's will? What is God's will? Well, this is, the, this, this is it. This is it. Get, get this out of the way. Get them out of the way. The second thing is that the servant had a plan. He had insight. Look at verse 10. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of the master. He didn't, he didn't go empty-handed. You see, he had a plan. Had a plan. Do you have a plan to determine God's will? Do you have a plan? Are you seeking to know God's will? How are you going to find out? Well, you see, first of all, as a Christian, God has renewed our minds. And, uh, you know, what about Bible common sense? Is, is there such a thing? Like Dr. Lucilius says, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're sweating bullets, uh, uh, there's financial needs and things of like that, and, and uh, Dr. Lucilius would always, you know, and we were, we're, we're, we're having a prayer meeting, and he, and he usually says, now it comes to this, you know, we, we finally get down to praying. Why didn't we do that in the first place? Well, see, there's some Bible common sense and, and Bible logic, walking by faith. That, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about, uh, you know, what the world has to say. Uh, Romans 12, 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You see, you want to know what God's will is? Well, you've you got to get into the Word, right? That's the first thing. Uh, Psalm 119, 105, you're familiar with this. The word is a lamp. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You want some light on what is God's will for your life? You see, you, you outrule, you out, and when I say rule out the most obvious, the idea is that, you know, if we would just get busy doing God's revealed will, what we know to do, and work on those things. And as, as we work on those things, that verse 27 says, in the way, in the way of doing God's revealed will, what will? He'll give you more light. He'll give you direction. And the Word of God is, is essential. Essential. Uh, but also, how about Romans 8, 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. See, the servant had a plan. He had insight. He was using his brains. He didn't go down to the well when there were, you know, well, the women come at night on the stay here and check it. No. 
He didn't go empty-handed. You see, he, he realized, well, I'm not going to go into Canaan land. First of all, I made an oath. But the master, Abraham, doesn't want me to be there. He wants me to go back to Mesopotamia, back to the family and find a wife, right? See, he's using his head. But you see, it's enlightened. It's renewed. It's the Bible sense. In a sense. But see, when it says uh, those that are uh, led by the Spirit of God, um, can you determine the leading of the Holy Spirit in your life? Hmm. We're not talking about dreams and visions and voices. You know, uh, the, my, my skin is goosebumps and, you know, I, I must know it's, you know, no. No. Okay? Can you determine, you know, say, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, in Galatians it says, be filled with the Word of God. But see, wh where is the Holy Spirit going to lead you? Well, he's going to lead you into the revealed will of God, first of all. Like I say, uh, sometimes we will, who am I going to marry? Should I take this job? Should I be this missionary? Should I go to this field? Should I do this? Should I do that? And you present all these things before the Lord. First thing is rule out the most obvious. Be doing in the way. Be about doing God's revealed will. Okay? As a Christian, as a member of a church, as a member of a family. There's, there's plenty, we, we could, you know, there's plenty to say uh, just on that. And as we do and, and seek to do God's will in those areas, you see those other things that we don't know about, life, a job, missions, field, something like that, preaching, you know what? God gives more light. He does. In His timing. And the Holy Spirit is going to lead you into a life, Christ-like life. He's going to lead you as if, uh, you know, to be like Christ, a servant, to sacrifice oneself. So can you determine the leading of the Holy Spirit this morning? And so, again, this, this point is important. The servant had a plan. He used his head. He ruled out the most obvious. But notice also it says here, and I think this is uh, a good one, um, he sought counsel. Do we seek counsel? Okay? Proverbs 11, 4 says, Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. Proverbs 24, 6, For by wise counsel dost thou make thy war. And in multitude of counselors, there is safety. You see, all these things, as we think about uh, renewing our mind, and uh, using our head, and uh, uh, using the Word of God, and being led of the Holy Spirit, and seeking counsel, you see, then there, there's this idea of the, trying to determine the providential workings of God. You know, not, not every dark cloud is, is, is you know, it, you know we, we don't always go by feelings, do we? And so these things will help us to determine the will of God. First thing, rule out the most obvious. What is the will of God for your life as a Christian? As a young person, as a wife, as a mother, as a father, as a deacon, as a pastor, as a sinner. What is God's will for your life this morning? You say, I don't know. Yes, you do. You can know it. Just as much as you can know God, you can know His will. You have His Word, and God, Holy Spirit, He is, and God is gracious. You see, we just have to get honest with ourselves. God will help. Rule out the most obvious, number one. Number two, use your head. Think. Seek counsel. Make some plans. There's nothing wrong with that. Make some plans. Is it according to God's revealed will set forth in the Word of God? I mean, you, uh, very obvious. You know, uh, well, I want to marry this, this girl, uh, this young woman. Well, uh, she's not a Christian. Well, that's pretty, like, that's like black and white. Okay? But that's what I'm talking about. Okay? Uh, uh, I, I, you know, like some people look at me uh, kind of strange. You say, well, uh, someone's going to give me a new job, or I'm in the city, there's a new job offer, and I, I look there and I see, uh, well, there's really no local church. Well, is it the, God's will to take that job? I would say no. You know, honestly, but you see how many brethren kind of kick against that, that I've known in the past years. If, if there's no local church there, I can't say it's God's will for me to be there. Now, I was a church planner, so that's a little different, right? 
of the missionary. I was sent up from tax from Texas. I was sent from Texas up to New, upstate New York, where there was no Grace churches. There were other churches for sure, but there was no Sovereign Grace churches. And so I was a church planner. So I went there, knowing it was God's will, and God opened up the doors. And I began. I opened my house up, and we started holding services, just like if I was in Texas. Okay. Uh, again, is it according to God's will? Now, again, this, this, this servant's uh, uh, procurement of a wife for Isaac is it, not just about a wife, right? Well, I'm looking for a spouse, or I'm looking for, you know, you can, you know, in many ways determine, I use these things to determine God's will. God's will. Now, let me give you an example. Are you seeking God's will in missions? Or in serving God in the local church? Kathy's parents, see, they, they, they were prepared. They went to school. I think it was Moody, right? Some other things? Moody and Brian. Okay. They got prepared. They're seeking God's will. They're praying. They're trying doors. They sent an application to uh, some mission place to go to China. Never heard back from the mission place. You know why? Their application got lost behind the filing cabinet. And years later, they found it. They never went to China. We were talking about that the other day. Children and us, we were sitting there. And they were saying, well, how would you and mother get together then? And all the kids said, well, God would have worked it out. <laughs> God would have worked it out. You know, like uh, your luggage got lost on a plane, and, and uh, you ended up uh, that in China. All kinds of things. God would have worked it out. But you see, they prepared... They prayed, they sought the Lord's will, they accepted the Lord's answer, they didn't go to China. Because the application got lost. You say, well, uh, was that an accident? Well, you could blame the incompetence. I'm not trying to be rude or ill towards the person, you know. Uh, you know maybe they could have been a little more organized. There's, there's other mission stories that I've read, the same kind of thing. I mean, just by hours, by, by just people missing each other's train. You know, Spurgeon. Here's a good one. This, this will make you laugh. Maybe you know about it. Spurgeon was, I think, going, wanting to go to college. And so he was going to a man's house that was uh, uh, either the director or the president of the college. And he was there on time. The, the maid sent him in, got him in, put him in this room. And the director was in this room. And guess what? They never met. And Spurgeon said, I guess I wasn't supposed to go to college. And so, you know, so as we see here, in trying to apply these things to God's, to determine God's will, first of all, uh, rule out the most obvious. I mean, the servant said, I'm not going to Canaan. I'm going to go uh, during the evening time when the ladies come out. Uh, I'm going to bring, I'm going to use my head, okay? <laughs> uh, counsel, the Word of God. I'm going to try to discern the leading of the Holy Spirit um, and, and, and you know, the providential workings of God. Well, my application got lost. What do I do now, Lord? Or, you know, I, I went, like, I went to the room and, and, and the guy we never met. And so you have to, deter, you know, those are God's providential works, but you are preparing. You're ruling out uh, certain things and you're using your head. And the third thing this morning in the matter of determining God's will is prayer. Of course, that, that's, mo that's so obvious, if you would. But look at chapter 24, verse 15 again. We should really be amazed, okay? And it came to pass before he had done speaking that Rebecca showed up. <laughs> and as we look at the servant's prayer, and that's what we're trying to do, okay? Let's, let's read that for a minute. Uh, look at verse 12 and 13. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day, and show kindness unto my master Abraham. 
Behold, I stand here by the well of the water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, Drink, and I will give the camels drink also, that the same be she that thou hast appointed for, the, my, for thy servant Isaac, and thereby shall shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. I mean, I, I you know, you think about um, one thing that, that really is a blessing to me, how the servant cared for Abraham. How the servant cared for Isaac. And you could picture God, Holy Spirit, and, and the work of the Trinity, and all these things that is, is so amazing as they draw sinners, and they answer to prayer, and put God's people to pray, okay? But notice here, as we look at the servant's prayer for, for the final point this morning, notice it was not a general, generic kind of request. It was not a general, generic kind of request. It was not like, you know, you get a shot done, you know, and you shoot buckshot, and you, you're going to hit something, right? Do we pray that way? And at the end we add, if the Lord will. Now, there's no problem saying it is the Lord will, but sometimes we, we have a buckshot kind of covered all bases. Notice he says he prays to the God of Abraham. You see, the servant, you know, uh, has been in Abraham's home tent, that is, right? He's, he's seen the God of Abraham. He's seen Abraham. He's seen Isaac. He, you know, Sarah. He's been part of that. And so he comes to the God of Abraham. The elements of his prayer, first of all, verse 12, is success. Don't you know? Don't you want success in God's will? Knowing God's will? Well, none of us would say no. <laughs> Who is that? I wasn't trying to be insensitive or bad timing. I remember when, when my little brother died, and uh, we were going to the funeral, and I was trying to say something to my other brother. You see, the safest, safest place for me and my children was to be in the will of God. You see, I've trucked all over the states, in a way, uh, from, from different churches trying to get to New York, in a sense, to be sent out as a missionary. And, and I was so afraid to be out of the will of God because then I would put my children in danger. You, you may not think of that. I do. And, uh, and so I wanted to, to and I said something to my brother and, and he was, it was, but I remember that. All I wanted to tell you, say to him, you know, if you're in the will of God, then you're safe. If you're outside of the will of God, you're in danger. In danger. And sinner friend, you're outside of the will of God. If we feel the will of God this morning, if you're lost. But you see, he prayed for success. Send me good speed. <laughs> that's, 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 that's amazing. I want to know your will, Lord. Show me it. Let it be successful. Take away all the ifs, ands, and buts, and all the confusion, all the doubt, and all, you know, help me to discern your will. I want to succeed in this. Secondly, he says, for divine guidance. Verse 13 and 14. Behold, I stand here by the well of the water, and the daughters of men of the city come out to draw water, and let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher. He said, you kind of, you know, why didn't he go search for the family? I mean, it's just like, it, it's very interesting where he's at this well. And uh, remember, he, he's, he said uh, to Abraham, what if this doesn't work, Abraham? You know, what if, if this doesn't uh, pan out? <laughs> you remember I said, we knew that it was God's will for Isaac to have a wife, right? He's the seed. He's going to have descendants. You see, the blessing is going to go to Isaac. In order for him to have physical seed, he has to have a wife and children. And so Abraham knows it's God's will for, for, Ab for Isaac to have a wife. But when? When shall? Well, now, 
Isaac uh, is 40. We were talking about that the other day, Michael, right? You know? 40. Yeah. Over the hill. I was 30 something. I thought I was, I would I'd never get married, you know? But the idea is that he, he prayed for divine guidance. And then, third, we see God confirm his choice. Now, we're not going to belabor the point, or, or <clears throat> if you, if you want to say the list of things in, in determining God's will, at the top of the list, I would not put, seek a sign. Definitely. I would not put, seek a sign. If you want a sign, Satan will give you a sign. Okay? It's like, here's another story. Wesley is coming back from Georgia. He's failed as a missionary, John Wesley, in Georgia. Uh, he, you know, he fails, and the whole story about that. But he come, he's coming back on a boat. George Whitfield is in another boat, another ship, and he's going to go back. And they heard, you know, see, they had a falling out somewhat, because uh, George Whitfield is sovereign grace, election, sovereignty of God. Uh, John Wesley wasn't. Okay. And so they were, they were kind of parting ways a little bit. And so George Whitfield wanted to meet and pray, with, or at least talk to John Wesley. You know what John Wesley did? He took a, a, a lot, or dice, or uh, not a lot, but the, you know, like a, straws. You know, he picked the straws, and, and this is what John Wesley would do. He, he, he'd pull us, he's okay, this straw, if it's shortest, I will talk to George Whitfield as long as I won't. He pulled the longest, I won't. That's how, he, that's how he determined God's will. And it, dear ones, listen, you laugh at that, but some of the old, older Christians back in those days, that's how they did it. Now, if you were the high priest uh, of the Israelites, you, you'd have a, uh, a little bag of, of some special rocks or something. I can't think of the names of them, how to pronounce them right. I'm not going to try that. But determine the will of God. There, there would be a way for the high priest to determine the will of God. Okay, which lamb... You sacrifice. Which goat goes for the, the, the offering for the blood? And which goat is the, the, the scapegoat? Well, God, I need to know. God would show. Interesting. A sign, a token. Now, there's some, uh, there's a verse that's been on my heart. It says, uh, Psalms 86, 17. Show me a token for good, that they which hate me may see it, and be ashamed because thou, Lord, hast hope in me and comforted me. Show me a token for good. See, um, ever put out a fleece? Nobody? Ever put, ever put out a fleece? You know what I mean? Gideon's fleece? Lord, uh, you know, one, one time it's, you know, it's, it's dry on the fleece and wet around, and the next time it's the adverse, you know? And uh, so Gideon knew Lord's will. How about way back uh, in uh, Hezekiah's day? Let me read this. The prophet Isaiah 38 says, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, The God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Syria, and I will defend the city and this shall be a sign unto thee from the Lord, and the Lord will go do this thing that he hath spoken. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the decree, degrees, which is gone down in the sundial of Esau. Ten degrees backwards. So the sun returned ten degrees by which degrees it was gone down. They were looking at the sundial, Tim, and it went back ten degrees. God did that. That was a sign for Hezekiah. Wow. Wouldn't it be easy? You know, Lord, I want to determine your will. Uh, just give me a sign. Now, first of all, I understand that, uh, you know, you might say a sign, right? Remember I said, it's not on the top of the list. God forbid, it's not on the top of the list. You see, the first thing is what? Rule out what is obvious. Uh, be in the Word of God to determine God's will. Use your head. Uh, Think biblically. Seek to, uh, before, uh, to, lead, uh, to, to, to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Seek counsel. The Word of God. Pray. And as you're praying, ask for specific things. Okay? 
And then on the, on the end you say, a sign, hmm, a sign. We're in the 21st century, right? But I want to have a balance here this morning, okay? See, sometimes we, we, we're deists. You know what a deist is? Here's one explanation of a deist. A deist is, uh, we believe God created everything. Okay, we don't deny creation. Deism was big in the 17, 1800s. Okay. Uh, we believe God created everything, but we don't believe that God interferes in the affairs of men. Unless you're aware of the word, God doesn't intervene in the affairs of men. Or does he? You see, when we talk about sign, you know, the, the point I'm trying to make, yeah, be very careful. Uh, be very careful, <laughs> okay? Uh, but you see, do we serve the true and living God? You see, is he alive? Does he, is he working, uh, orchestrating? You know, can he use a verse? Can he use providence? Can he use an accident? Can he use this? Can he use that? You see, it doesn't have to be a voice from heaven, but you see, God is alive this morning, and he does want to show you his will as your heavenly father, if you're saved. Think of that. What father among us would not want our children to know the will of God for their lives. Yeah. You know, we're talking about, well, I, I don't want you following, do all the mistakes, don't do all the mistakes I did. Why? Here's some count, and, you know, so, and so, be careful. In this matter of prayer, yes, he did ask for a sign. He asked for a token. And again, if you're there in chapter 24, verse 15, and it came to pass before he had done speaking, <laughs> I mean, he didn't give, there comes a woman. And then he realizes, you know, uh, the woman says exactly what he, he said before the Lord. And the Lord, uh, he, he just, he's confounded. He said, wow. Wow. It happened just like I prayed. Maybe it's a challenge for prayer this morning. Not to ask just for signs, but ask for particular things. You know, you, you read that, uh, who's that? Uh, let's look at her name for a minute. Uh, Tori Camp, Tori, Tori, Cory Tambu. Okay, High, not the hiding place, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, it was a miracle today. Uh, sister, uh, not the other day, the other day, uh, Sister Jolene Berkeley Bar from, Bar from, from Peach Street said they looked at the Bibles, and then they looked at the Bibles, they're going into Egypt. Dr. Sulis and Pastor David. They're, look, they're looking at the Bible, and another guy comes, and he looks at the Bible, and another guy comes and looks at the Bible, and after they all look at the Bible, they kind of said, okay, you can go. Was that a sign? Was, was that, could, could you consider that a, a mirror? Brother Andrew, there's another one. You see, they're, they're, they're you know, get the whole picture. Don't just go for signs. But remember, God does. He is the living God. The last part of, of the element of prayer, the qualities uh, of, of the bride we'll look at another time because I think there's, there's a lot there. You see, uh, in knowing God's will, a wife for Isaac and procuring a wife for Isaac, the, the uh, you know, maybe we said, why didn't he just go to Nahor's home and find a wife? No, no. There are some reasons. I, I think in his mind, he says, what kind of wife would be good for Isaac? Lazy old, you know, woman? Or someone that was industrious, courteous, not afraid to work? I mean, when you look at, when you look at chapter 24, and you remember I said, you look at Rebecca in 24, uh, wow. You look at Rebecca later on, her name is in Snarer. She's the mother of Jacob. That should tell you something. And then one other thing, and we'll go on here, and we'll close. You know, what other woman would have said, yeah, I'll go. <laughs> you know, when you get down to the end of the, of the narrative, and uh, the procurement, and the servant is, is uh, uh, rehearsing everything, and, and, and uh, Laban, or Nahor, Laban is saying, okay, do you want to go, Rebecca, and all this? And, and, and uh, she says, yeah, I'll go. She's just adventurous. 
I'll go. I've never seen Isaac. I'll travel all that way. I think there's some qualities in, in, that we'll see next time in, in, in a greater way. So what is the principle this morning? I hope you haven't lost that verse, 27. Verse 27. You say, I want to know God's will this morning. Verse 27. I being in the way, the Lord led me. That's the principle. That's the principle. Rule out the most obvious. You know, uh, I think it's Deuteronomy. I don't have the verse. In fact, about uh, what God has revealed is for us to know, for our children. But the secret things, the hidden things, are for God. You see, he's given us enough in this Bible. If we were just about doing his revealed will, and as we treat, try to do his revealed will, uh, by his grace and the power of the Holy Spirit, you see, all these other little things that we're wondering about, jobs, wife, ministry, you name it, okay? Like we, we talked about praying for our children, uh, for their, their spouses to be, you know? We want to know God's will, okay? So number one, rule out the most obvious. Number two, use your head. Word of God, counsel, etc. Number three, there's prayer. And there's also what? Answer to prayer. Answer to prayer. Look at verse 48. And uh, 24, 48 for a minute. And I want you to, I want you to consider this. Notice how the servant interprets God's providential workings. Verse 27 says, uh, I being in the way, the Lord led me. You see, are there many ways? Yes. Which way to take? What to do? Where's God's will? But you see, God will lead me. Just like Abraham said, the angel of the Lord will go before you. The angel, God's angel will go ahead. Look at 48. This is after he's rehearsing again to serve. He says, I bowed down my head and worshiped the Lord and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. You see, it was the right way. The right way. Are you assured this morning that God has you on the right way? Your Heavenly Father? Are you assured by Scripture this morning? Has to be, brother. You have to be assured by Scripture. Secondly, you know, if God has led you in the past, won't He lead you in the future? Talk about experience. You see, Paul says in Romans chapter 5, we're not going to read that, Romans 5, 1 through 5, but it talks about that hope makes it not a shame. Why? Experience. You see, God has not left me alone in the past. He's directed me over and over and over. But you see, it's not going to be my, well, I'm fiddling my thumbs and say, oh, I wish I had a sign or something. I have to what? I have to rule out some things. I have to be praying. I have to seek the Word of God. I have to seek God's counsel. I have to listen to, you know, what do you think, Dad? What do you think, Mother? Well, pastor? Or, you know, other godly Christians. And then put it before the Lord and say, Lord, I'm going to pray, and I want, I need an answer, Lord. I need a definite answer. Should I go to the mission field? Should I be a pastor? Should I take this job? Should I do this? You say, I don't live that way. Yes, we do, don't we? Don't we? We live that way as Christians. But notice here, the right way. The right way. And uh, let me give you one verse here. Uh, Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. Unto thee do I wait all the day. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. Rule out the most obvious. Use your head. Make it a matter of prayer, specific prayer. It says, my God shall supply all your need. Now we could go another hour or two just trying to figure out, what, is it this a need or is this a want? Is this a need or want? Seek counsel. Is it God's will? Does it glorify Him? Be sensitive to the leading of God's Holy Spirit. <coughs> Obey. Don't forget that. Because once God gives you an answer to prayer, <laughs> okay, 
He gives you an answer to your prayer, and, and you say, this seems impossible, Lord. How can this, how can this be the way? Lord, how can I get from Texas to, to New York? Lord, I never stepped foot in New York, up in that area. How can I, how can I? You have to believe. When I obeyed, I was given more light. When I, when I obeyed, all the doors open. Financial, health, I mean, you know, I, 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 I kid sometimes, and I'm not trying to be mean or anything, you know, my kids only got sick when we got to Canada. Well, we, we thank the Lord for His mercy and grace keeping the kids and socialized medicine and everything like that. Well, that's part of living. But you see, trawling around all around uh, uh, Texas, Ohio, and Georgia and all that stuff, you know, we weren't, we weren't sick at all. A few times in emergency. What do I owe that to? God's mercy. God's grace. Being in God's will. Praying and ask the Lord to keep our children. But you see, it's all part of determining. Obey in faith. And last but not least, I, I, I warn you again. Sometimes, you know, God does give you signs. He'll give you a word. Maybe it's a scripture. Maybe it's a, you know, letter in the mail. Maybe, you know, uh, maybe the, the, the application has to be to fall behind the, the filing cabinet. That's a sign. Have you thinking about that, right? Or a Spurgeon. You know, he's in this room and in that room and the director's in that room and somehow the, the maid didn't connect the point that he was there for an appointment. You know, you think about, it. you know, uh, David Namazu was, it was a, it's Hal Nettleton, the same thing, you know. Uh, he, he got out of college and uh, he, he, had a, he had a debt that he needed to pay and he felt that he needed to pay that debt off first so he was a tutor there at Harvard and he missed, he, 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 he was so consumed in missions. I mean, uh, there was Rice, there was others. The, the, I mean, the great mission, the missionary movements of the 1800s and, and then the Haystack prayer meetings. And he was all part of that. And he said, I want, you know, you couldn't hold him down. I want to talk about missions and missions and missions. And he had to pay off that debt. And in paying off that debt, he had to work. He missed a conference that he wanted to go to. You know what? He never... I say how Nettleton never made it to the mission field. But he came up to upstate New York, Albany, Watertown, Sackett's Harbor. And God used him in the Second Great Awakening to save thousands and thousands and thousands. I say how Nettleton. The book, I think uh, someone picked it up. God sent revival, Second Great Awakening. I say how Nettleton wanted to be a missionary. God says, no, you're going to stay here on the home front and you're going to be an itinerant evangelist and I'm going to use you to save thousands and thousands and thousands. God's will, brother. Really. You can know God's will. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your scriptures and, and we thank you, Holy Father, for your faithfulness and that uh, even as the verse says, in the way you will lead us. As we seek to know your will, you will lead us further. Our Father, give us grace to submit to your will. Give us light and understanding, and again, that we will obey by faith. Bless this to our hearts, O Lord. Give us grace as we're determining uh, your will for our lives, for our children, for our church. Uh, we know that you do want us to be on the right way. You want us to do the right things. Father, please give us grace and mercy. Give us direction. Give us guidance. And we ask all these things, Father, in Jesus' precious name.